Welcome back to another Astro 310 video. Today's video is titled Basic Laws, and by the end you're going to be able to address our four objectives. Our first objective is to explain how an object is put into orbit. Second is to explain the concepts of weight, mass, and inertia. Third is to know Newton's three laws of motion. And fourth, you're going to be able to describe the basic laws of conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So how do I get to space? Getting to space is simply a matter of being above Earth's atmosphere. But staying there is going to require significant horizontal velocity, what we're going to call orbital velocity. And here's why. Newton famously uh, developed a thought experiment to describe this phenomena by talking about a cannon fired from a very high mountain. So in this thought experiment, you have to imagine there's a cannon with cannonballs uh, on a very high mountain where there's no air resistance. And if not for Earth's gravity, if we fired a cannonball from, the, from this cannon, this cannonball would just progress in a straight line forever. But because Earth's gravity is there, it's going to actually pull this cannonball back down towards the Earth. I'll show you a demonstration of that now. So if we increase our velocity that we're able to fire our cannonballs at, the cannonballs will travel a little bit further distance before falling back towards Earth. And as you might imagine, if I continue to increase this velocity, then at some point, our cannonballs are going to be able to actually travel around the Earth. And at this point, our cannonballs are actually falling back towards the surface of the Earth as quickly as the Earth is curving away from the cannonball. Ow! When we've achieved that position or that velocity, we call that achieving orbital velocity. So that's how a satellite is actually able to stay in, in orbit um, above the surface of the Earth, which is really useful for military purposes. So here's some basic definitions. Mass. Mass is how much matter an, an object contains. And weight is different than mass because it's going to be that mass multiplied by the influence of gravity. Inertia relates to an object's tendency to stay at rest or in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Gravity is the tendency for two things to attract each other. Every object from the smallest satellite to a human to a bigger satellite to the Earth itself to the giant planet Jupiter to our Sun exert gravitational force on each other based on how massive they are. Momentum is going to be the resistance of an object in motion to changes in its speed or direction of motion. So the more momentum an object has, the more difficult it is for that object to change its speed or direction. And total mechanical energy is going to be related to how much um, essentially energy an object has related to its position and its motion. So Newton had three laws. We're going to talk about those here. The first stated explicitly. It states that a body continues in the state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change that state by forces impressed upon it. We have two examples of that. The first is that of linear momentum. So there, there here, P, linear momentum, is related to an object's mass times its velocity. Angular momentum, which is represented by this capital H, is related to its inertia, I, and its angular rate, or rotation rate, omega. Second law, the time rate of change of an object's momentum equals the applied force. So for this, you might see, um, stated in, in mathematical symbols here, that the change in P over the change in T, or delta P over delta T, is equal to our total force. If we were to expand that out using calculus, we could actually use the product rule and take the differential or, um, of each of the mass and the velocity terms, and we end up with this, mass times delta V over delta T plus delta M over delta T times RV. Well, what we know is that our mass is not changing often, and so if that second term goes to zero, you might see this second law stated in its more uh, conventional and traditional format, and that is of F equals MA. A constant force accelerates an object off into the sunset. Our third law is that when an, a body exerts a force on body, that body will exert an equal but opposite force on the other body. So 
This might be best demonstrated with two ice skaters. Imagine two ice skaters standing in the center of a rink and they both push off from each other. And what you notice is that if one pushes against the other, it's gonna cause them both to repel each other with equal and opposite force. Wait for it, wait for it. Bink, there's that equal and opposite force. What is energy? Energy is the ability to do work, where work is moving something against a force, i.e. moving a rock from the bottom of a mountain to the top of a mountain. You've done work on that, um, on that rock. So mechanical energy is going to be the summation of both our change in potential and our change in kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and potential energy is mass times the acceleration due to the gravity times the differential in height. And we also, you often might hear this term too, that energy is conserved. Well, what does that mean? It means that the total energy of a system, an isolated system, is going to remain constant. That energy in that system can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed or transferred from one form of energy to another. Such is the case with a pendulum, where you have essentially our potential energy, where the pendulum is at the top, a uh, rising portion of its, of its arc, um, traded for kinetic energy, where it's down towards the bottom. You also see this case with gravity. So gravity is conservative field, therefore the total energy is going to be constant. What you might see for a planet orbiting the sun or for a satellite orbiting the earth is that at certain points you're going to have a maximum of potential energy and that is where the planet might be furthest away from its orbiting body or orbited body. Um, and then its kinetic energy is going to be maximized where it's closest to that orbited body. So we're going to have this trade-off between kinetic and potential energy. Here you can see the pink kinetic energy bar lowering as a satellite moves further away and its kinetic energy is decreasing as it's moving away from the Earth. And the blue potential energy bar is growing as a satellite is moving towards apogee. Um, but that total energy remains constant. Next, we're going to have uh, the conservation of momentum, which can be described um, maybe most clearly with uh, an ice skater. As we've all seen an ice skater on the center of the ice, uh, as she or he moves her arms out, her angular rate is going to slow, but as she moves her arms in closer to her body, her angular rate is going to, to speed up and to increase. And this is due to the conservation of momentum. So that momentum is going to remain constant for the system. Therefore, as she increases her inertia and moves her arms out to the side, she's going to move slower. And when she moves her arms closer to her chest, she's going to move faster. So hope you learned some things. We've talked about how an object is put into orbit. I've explained to you better the concepts of weight, mass, and inertia. I've described Newton's three laws of motion. And last, you should be able to describe, based on what I've told you, the basic laws of conservation of energy and momentum. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.